This is triple run. Made the bracelet a little bit tight. The size is nicer than the quadruple. The thickness, the girth. Uh, should have made a larger tail on the stopper knot so I could adjust the tension. Because uh, once you make this, there's no going back. There's very little adjustability. But quick release works. So here's a uh, penta loop of the new design. I barely had enough paracord, uh, but there's so little excess I should be able to finger twirl it. Made an extra long tail in case I needed to readjust the uh, stopper knot position. This is kind of fat. I'm not sure if I'd be comfortable wearing this kind of bracelet, but here goes. Quick release works. And this uses the double lock on the top but I think it should deploy. It worked. Finger twirl. Ta-da! Monster bracelet with fast deploy. I'm assuming I have enough time on my memory card. Let me show you how I made that. It's about 18 feet of cord. Put a stopper knot, and I like the Ashley stopper knot at the end. Use a long tail so that you can trim it later uh, the, at the last minute. The advantage of making it too long is you could reposition the knot uh, up or down if you need tighter bracelet or looser bracelet. Whereas if you make it a shorter length, you don't have that flexibility. So it's always safer to make the tail too long and then trim it later. Measure the bracelet for the wrist. Since monster bracelets are fat, I like to put three fingers underneath and that tells me that's the position for the first loop. Loop it down here with enough gap for the paracord loop to go around there. The buttonhole. Now up to the top, but now we do shorter loops. And this size needs to be big enough for the stopper knot to pass through. So that's the first extra loop. All the ones down here are the same length. Second shorter loop. Third shorter loop. Fourth shorter loop. I'm going to neaten these up a little in a moment. Okay. So now, one of these loops is different than the other, and you need it to have a clear, free and clear deployment. So, I'm going to pull this out. Make all the loops the same, except for the big one. So notice that this one, which is the buttonhole attachment loop, is free and clear of the other ones. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, these other ones are off to the side almost. First course is to loop this one into these other four. See it loops now into those other four, and that little hole there, we're going to put the paracord tail through. So here's the very end of the unwrapped paracord. We're going to put it through that hole. And that's going to be the first outer coil. Want it at the very end. And it's hard to tighten this after the fact, so you have to do this 
somewhat tightly right now. So this is coming up from the bottom, loops around, gets pulled tight. This buttonhole has to be large enough for the stopper not to pass through because this is the buttonhole for attachment. So we wrap tightly and now we go on the outside. So now we tighten this up by sliding everything in this direction. If it will slide, if otherwise you pull these down. There we go. Make sure the buttonhole is big enough for the stopper not to pass through. Yep. And now we're ready for the balance of the wrap. Before I do the balance of the wrap, here's a close-up of what this top part looks like. Definitely a bit more complex. So we're nearing the end. Apply some co coil compression. Already done some coil compression, we're doing a little more. So you do it tightly here, but the balance you do loosely. So as I adjusted the tension, compressed the coils, Looks like I have just enough paracord. So the last, so we near the end, we want it tight, but we need maneuverability too. So what we do is we wrap them loosely, but we'll be pulling them tight at the end. So see how these last couple of ones are loose? That gives me maneuverability to get the cord through those four loops. One. Two. Three, four, but now we tighten them up. And then pull it taut. And then we push towards them. So I had just enough paracord. Ideally that loop would be down. I don't know exactly how to get it back down. Sometimes doing this pulls the ends in, kind of corkscrewing it. Yeah, it sort of did. So now we roll it to make it nice and tidy. This is a fat bracelet. Not sure I would be, normally be willing to wear a bracelet that looks like that. But here we go. maybe ever so slightly too tight so I would move the stopper knot down a little but 
it's still wearable. I can still slide it around. But this is just a test prototype. So I would trim off the excess. I would trim off the excess over here, leaving about a millimeter. But there is a completed bracelet. This was about 18 feet. And now let's test a quick release. That works. Straighten it out, and now we test deployment. So with deployment, first thing that happens is that the buttonhole loop passes through the other four. That then frees them up to deploy. So watch what happens up here as I pull the ripcord. All four came out, and now Remember, there's not just one internal run, there's a whole bunch, so you have to keep pulling until all of them are out, and then, when all of them are out, you can do the finger trick. Ta-da! So that was about 18 feet with quick release. So, if after wearing this a while, the uh, end starts to submarine down into the coil. Let me see if I can show you this more closely. See how the, uh, the outer stuff is sort of burying itself down into the coils, which are now almost falling off? That implies you've put on too much cordage and you need to peel off a few coils and re redo the end. So my typical 550 bracelet, measures approximately 13.06 millimeters wide and here is my Godzilla bracelet this is just a simulation I haven't actually cut the cut the length yet uh, this one measures Twenty-six point eight, so just over an inch thick. 